Yes, the first daily scoreboard of the week, Monday here. We will, we will be looking at the commodities and what we look at uh, right uh, very quickly, then Twitter, then a few stocks, but I want to give an update onto those stocks. As always, like, subscribe if you find this valuable, which I hope you do. Otherwise, I think you wouldn't be here, obviously, but uh, or it could be my beautiful rough voice that I'm so proud of. <laughs> Anyways, um, I want to say something. I forgot it. It is what it is. I will maybe find out during the during this video. Thank you for tuning back in, by, uh, back in, guys. Highly appreciate it. So, the quick, quick update here for the daily scoreboard. Let's see. Silver getting whacked down two and a half percent, losing some very important trend lines here. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Silver right now looks a bit sketchy here. And uh, I think we could be going down to roughly 21. Um, but again here, I don't know what to say really. Down 2.5%, not ideal. Bit of a retrace onto, up into the end of the day. But uh, yeah, still an early call. Gold, not so much here. Still within our golden bull flag, down a half a percent. Again, we are uh, very close off the all-time highs. And um, yeah. What is worrying me the most is actually the gold to silver ratio, which is up 2% today. You know, we have that breakout stuff here, small term stuff, bull flag, bull pennant. Now we are grinding high. Stiff resistance coming in here, roughly 91. Yes, we have a nine handle in front there. I mean, that's just insane. We came really, really close so many damn times to break down from that line. We couldn't, and now we are seeing a move to the upside. Uh, in the gold silver ratio, that is not ideal. Actually, for gold and silver, that's not good. But also for the overall markets, that's never a good thing to have a, a spike in this ratio. The Dixie up 10% today. Uh, excuse me, 10%. Wow, that would be amazing. 0 0.10%. Uh, still look short-term bullish here. I do think this is the last move. Hopefully, I'm right before we come down. Um Hopefully I'm right. Otherwise, again, that would it will, that would be very grim. Bitcoin down three point six percent, losing the four thousand the forty thousand dollar level. In my view, we are going to a tad above thirty k as we speak here. That's how I see it coming all the way back down to roughly thirty one thirty two k before any bigger support is coming in. We do have the middle line here of the channel, but again, man, I don't think that will do anything. Oil is doing great, up one and a half percent today. Beautiful. Again, we have also kind of like you know broken that wedge, but we came back in, so still a bit early. But definitely, I hope this one will get resolved to the upside. Um, that is my main focus. That triangle there. Oil. If we do, energies will have a good tailwind. GDX. The gold miners down roughly the same amount, zero point. 3%, the same as gold, more or less, not doing much here. Again, yeah, again, until gold get above that all-time high, or at least that 2100, that is still remaining to be the case. Silver miners uh, flat for today, while silver is down 2.5%. Maybe that is the start of something new. I have no idea. But we haven't broken any big things, so I'm not going to detail there. Uranium, uranium spot price, again, flat. 106. I think actually I saw on Twitter it is at 108. Could be. URM is getting killed here today. We have soon closed the gap here. And we're coming very close to retesting the 2021 highs, which is textbook stuff. We're closing the gap fine. And that's also where we want to see it pause. We don't want to see it come further down. URM against, wow, I didn't see that one. Uh, URN uh, M against the, um, the spot price coming down from that level. Um, that is actually not a, it's not a good thing, obviously. We want to have the miners outperform, but definitely, man, we just, the miners can't seem to outperform the spot price, really. It's just amazing. Even though we are above the 2021 highs, but in relation to the spot price, we are doing very, very bad. 0.4% for the 10 year rate, still holding on that 4% handle right here. SP, we will not go into, no, we will not do that. We will go into our, the Twitter stuff. I think most of, some of this is from the weekend as well. So keep that in mind, uh, even four days ago. So this is the, this is silver bar, GDXJ divided by the gold ratio. Again, coming all the way down here is well-defined blue lines, uh, blue trend lines. 
Also, the horizontal here is very, very beautiful, well-defined. Again, we're still in a downtrend, but damn, I mean, at some point in time, it has to go up, right? <laughs> it has to. Blake here again, NVIDIA monthly chart makes me laugh every time. Yep, this is absolutely insane. I mean, who would have thought that? Uh, the March 2020 is roughly here, and that is 40 bucks. And now we are at 500, 600. So that is uh, 30x roughly from there. Insane. Patrick, Karim, gold and silver, remember where you are. So this is gold versus CPI. And you also have um, silver in the background on the, on the bar chart there or the histogram. Again, I never really thought of this before, but man, the correlation between gold versus CPI and how silver tracks that. I mean, uh, beautiful stuff here. Uh, again, I didn't know until I saw this and uh, I'm actually a, a, I look at many ratios and I'm ashamed that I didn't see this one. So beautiful, beautiful chart by Patrick. Karim, bad charts right there. Cycle fans, WTI. It looks like, it looks unlikely that crude oil will make a lower low in January. A close above the 10 week moving average by the end of January will confirm a rally into the next 24 week cycle high, roughly around March. Again, you can see here the highs are just very well defined. And um, yeah, you have that pinch right there that I just showed you on um, on oil. So it could be that we're closing above here actually, because this is roughly, this is from the weekends. So we could have confirmed that weekly cycle low today, according to the cycle fan. Trend Spider, NVIDIA. Overall, inverted head and shoulders. You also have a huge trend line coming across here if you zoom out a bit more. And they have earnings this week. I don't know when, but they do. Uh, Tavi Costa, I will not read all this stuff here again, but this is copper price. Uh, and you have overall here, you can see the copper price tracks the Chinese eat, uh, the Chinese stock market pretty, pretty well. But, you know, you can see here that there is a gap coming up. Now, there is a gap uh, between the, the copper price and the stock market for the first time in a very long time. Uh, very interesting to want to follow. Uh, usually the jaws gets closed. Either the Chinese market comes back with a raw or, you know, copper could break down from that, you know, move down here and then the, the triangle. So transpire again here, the old support and resistance switcheroo. This is Coinbase. You can see here we came come we have come down quite heavily 30 percent into again this zone here the highs there there which is basically a neckline right so definitely it should find support here um i do expect a bounce here at least because we've come down so heavily um for coinbase again one trend line one zone here again says it all that that's often what you need so beautiful simplicity i like it stefano here again uh silver again i don't want to read all that i just want to show you silver how it tracks the chinese markets compared to copper which has actually done quite well silver is just tracking it uh the miners at least are tracking it here uh this uh the chinese markets quite quite well uh high correlation for sure blake tesla Tesla at the most pivotal point going into earnings Wednesday, do or die here at roughly a tad above 100 to one, uh, 200 to 210. The trend line that I spoke about is that one coming right down right there. Uh, you can connect all the highs. And yes, you have a major level here at roughly 200. But again, you can see here the bullish consolidation in my view. So again, very, and again, we have earnings. I think earnings will define the bullish or the bearish side of that. Uh, so that is it for the Twitter stuff. I just want to give you an update on some of some of the charts that we're looking at. This is uh, SP again. We we entered right there, you know, on the break of that smaller golden right there, and we're now coming straight up. And actually, intraday we tested that upper red there. So again, going according to plan. I don't know if I can hold, you know until the target from that inverted head and shoulders will be met. But for now, it, it looks good. Uh, but I do think I will take some sort of profit when we get into some big resistances. But again, for now, and this is a uranium stock, by the way. And uh, so it just means that even though the ETFs are pulling back, um, some of the miners are actually doing quite well. Most of them are at resistance or retesting all-time highs and so on. So I think uranium bull market is still very, very much in play. Fine. 
I want to show you, we had that huge breakout here. You want to buy that first pullback. If we get all the way down to here at roughly 0 0.5, yummy in my view. That is just fantastic. Again, do your own due diligence. But again, I just if we get that in my view, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Again, yeah, I will not say any further. I just that is just my take. Adding here, buying here at roughly 0 0.45, 0 0.46, whatever it will it may be. That is how you do it. Uh, can Alaska again here doing quite well, even though um, the ETFs are doing poorly as we speak. We have a gap here, yes, but we have left and broken the long term golden rail right there. Beautiful stuff here. Should you be a buyer here with RSI that high? Maybe not, but definitely if you're in, beautiful. PayPal, golden trend line coming down there. We also have a neckline right there at the bottom of this pattern. So again, we have we have had a fake out here, but again, this is also a retest of the neckline. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a move up here during the week for PayPal getting confirmed the breakout and the neckline. Um, actually, that is a quite remarkable entry. Um, uh, last but not least, SGD, Snowline Gold, getting a bit of a pullback here at that, tooth, at that triangle high right there. But again, if you look at it on the one hourly, in my view, this is a very controlled bull flag in the making or bullish. You can see it right there in my view. Snowline Gold wants to basically move higher until proven. Otherwise, as I always say, this is a beautiful bullish uptrend. The last hurdle, the last, but the all-time high, actually, the last hurdle before I think you can go and visit that upper green. Uh, parallel channel. Not tomorrow, not next week, but in the end, I think that's what we could do. Good. That is all I have for you. And um, I can't remember what I was going to say, so maybe I'll find that when I go to sleep. Who knows? Guys, thank you very much for tuning back in. Um, I highly appreciate the comments that you give me. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, you know, you cannot please everyone. Some disagree, some agree. But overall, I think I really enjoy the community that I have here on both on Twitter, but also on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, without any further ado, I will not take up much more of your time. And sorry for this rough voice today. I've, uh, it has been a bit sore. It is what it is. Guys, stay safe. Bye.